Ed Jones and welcome to the first of a series of videos on telescope mirror making and with a little bit of lens making thrown in with it. Um, I've worked in the optics industry for, the, for 28 years and I'm an active ATM and telescope maker, maybe some of you have heard of me, but um, I, uh, I'm a little unconventional. Um, some of the methods I, I use will be uh, a, little, a little bit unconventional. But at this point, I, I guess you've already decided you wanted to make a telescope uh, mirror. And maybe you've already got a, t a telescope making kit, or you've got a piece of glass that you want to grind into a mirror. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll start from there with the mechanics of, of doing that. Now, years ago, uh, telescope makers you get two pieces of glass and uh, kind of like this and they would throw a little bit of silicon carbide abrasive on it and some water and then they uh, would do a nice W stroke overhanging your mirror on top over the edge and a nice long W stroke and long W stroke uh, grinds away the center of the, the mirror on top and grinds away the edges of, uh, of the tool and generates uh, a uh, generates the curve that way. That's a very messy process and best done outside and not on your wife's kitchen countertop. But um, the problem with that is you got two pieces of glass and you know you kind of waste one piece of glass doing it that way. So uh, in more recent years uh, Telescope makers have um, replaced the tool with a piece of plaster and you know, they'll glue on some ceramic tiles. Um, I don't have an example of that, but here's a picture of one on the internet where it made a plaster tool and then uh, put on your tiles and uh, now that works the same. Ceramic tiles are just a little bit softer, but I, I don't like this process because if, if you look, all these little grooves are great places for, for grit to collect into, and when you go onto the finer abrasives, uh, that grit can be washed out and scratch your mirror, and the, the tiles themselves can actually scratch the mirror sometimes. Um, so. Uh, that, that's a pretty common way of doing it now, but, but there, yeah, there's, there's a better way. Um, and that is to replace the ceramic tiles with, with pennies. But um, you can't generate the curve that way. You need to use a different way of generating the curve. Now, the best thing to do is actually get your blank generated from your glass suppliers. I know United Lens and maybe Newport Optics and other people will, for a little bit extra cost, will generate the curve on, onto it. Kind of like, like this. Already pre-generated curve. This is a conical blank. And that's very, that's very nice and saves you a lot of work, but it, it's a little more expensive. Um, so if you want to, you want, really want to do it uh, by hand, um, I would, um, I would go with the uh, plaster tool with pennies, but we still need to g generate the curve. So how do we do that? Um, one way you can do it is to take a piece of cast iron. This is a, a lap back. And if you can find a piece of steel or cast iron that's about half the diameter of your part, you can take your grit and uh, grind grind your W stroke with a piece of cast iron. Um, you'll, your part will go concave and you'll, you will hardly touch the, the cast iron. Cast iron grinds away very, very slowly. So uh, it's a lot more efficient. Your, your grit isn't thrown off as much uh, to get better use out of your grit. And you're only grinding one curve instead of two. And it's a lot more efficient way of doing it. Um, you can do it on a machine if, if you can, and as you're doing it, you probably uh, you'll want to um, 
you want to be able to measure the curve. But I should back up is that before you do anything to a, a piece of glass, you want to make sure you take a stone and grind a nice protective chamfer around all your edges because um, a sharp edge on a piece of glass will chip very, very easily and you can easily make a nice big chip across your mirror and, and, and uh, it would still work but cosmetically it looks really bad so uh, the very first thing you want to do is take a stone and chamfer the edges of your glass. So like I said, I would recommend a, a piece of steel or a cast iron to, to grind it. Although an uh, uh, even better way um, is to take a take a diamond tool. This is a diamond tool that I use on a machine. But you can take this and it's got a uh, diamond embedded into a matrix around the rim. And you can use that to, to grind your grind your uh, your curve. And with a diamond, practically everything that comes off is glass. The um, diamond matrix wears away very, very slowly. You can make thousands of parts actually with a piece of tooling like this. But you probably will, won't have this, but what you could do is go down to Harbor Freight and I think you can get a, um, um, a four inch uh, diamond wheel for like six dollars and, and put that on the piece of the steel and, and use that and that'll just never wear away and, and it's a pretty efficient way of doing it. So, first of all, let me say this is going to be a messy operation and uh, probably best done outside if you can. Uh, wouldn't recommend it on your wife's countertop like I'm attempting to do. It's very risky. Um, and um, if you, you, I mean, you can do it in, indoors. Uh, a lot of guys use a barrel and they'll place, uh, uh, place a mirror on the barrel and, and walk around the barrel and doing this. Um, I might add here, I've got a piece of, um, uh, for, for support, I've got a little piece of bubble, pap, bubble wrap, and you can throw that away after we're done with the different grips, it's pretty cheap. So, and the, uh, the first thing you want to do before you even get started, actually when, as soon as you get your blanks, you want to put a bevel on your blank, a decent sized bevel, which I've already done. Um, basically, you take a silicon carbide stone and with lots of water and, and grind it, um, kind of like a file. Uh, you don't want to come up on it. You want to grind the edge, grind away from the edge, and put a bu nice bubble on it because it's a, it's a very it's very risky if you don't because glass will chip very easily if you accidentally bump it against a piece of a steel or something. Or it's 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 so simple to do and you you you'll end up with a big chip that will take uh, hours and hours to grind out if you um, or maybe maybe you can't even do it so it's um, you want to do that the very first thing is put a decent bevel on it and keep that bevel on there all the way during during the whole process um, for safety so um, if you're not uh, depending on how deep you want it your curve is going to be um, you want to um, start out probably with 80 grit, probably for for a good steep mirror. I'm going to start out with 120 because um, I'm really not going to finish this this up with. Uh, uh, I'm just I'm doing this for demonstration, but it's the same process. You want to throw some water on your on your mirror, and like I say, this is this is 120 grit. And sprinkle a good amount around. Maybe look around a little bit. Get it, make sure it's all wet. And like I say, this is messy. You want to um, you want to do like W strokes. You, you don't want to go off the edge because if you go off the edge, you're going to start, you know, 
uh, working against yourself. You want to take all the glass out of the center. So if you want to do a W stroke like this, that's good. That's the way I would I would go about it. And then um, if, you, if you're working outside on a or if, you, if you've got a barrel that you're setting this on, you can simply walk around the, your barrel. Um, if not, you want to rotate your your part, um, not this way, but you want to you want to keep it um, you want to keep it rotating so that you your everything evens out. You don't want to grind too much up up of one edge. So you just keep this keep this process up. It's kind of noisy. It gets even noisier with a heavier grit. You know, just rotate it every so often, just for, for good measure. And this is molded hard, so it's going to it's going to have a lot of areas of unevenness, but it'll it will eventually. Um, Work its, work its way down. And you can hear the noise of the glass. You can, yeah, you can go in circles too if you want to. Kind of helps distribute the, the grid around. And you can hear it working, but eventually, you, eventually the, the grit will. Um, um, be more and more quiet, and, and that means it's not going to um, it's not working as much. You, know, you get a lot of glass build up and broken down grit, and so you after after a few minutes of this kind of work, you're going to you're going to need to uh, clean everything up. That's why it's nice to do this outside. You just simply take a hose and rinse it all off. That's the problem. An uh, easier way to do it if you have access to a polishing machine. Machine. I've got this diamond wheel that I showed you earlier set up on a on a spindle with water dripping on it, and um, I'll let the machine do all the work. Here's how it runs. Pretty noisy, and you notice that the uh, stroke uh, is, the, the stroke is long enough that, that the wheel goes to the edge and goes to the center. So the wheel is slightly smaller than half, um, and that's okay. Um, but this this will generate the curve. A much easier way to do it. It doesn't have to be a machine. You can actually make a, uh, a rotating spindle and uh, attach the quill, which holds the tool, with just a simple uh, lever on a hinge. Maybe something something very simple. Uh, Save you a lot of work. And all the material that comes off of here is glass. There's hardly any of the wheel, wheel being used at all.